Here we are told that the equation x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 4 equals 0 has rational zeros. And we are to f use the rational zeros theorem to, to find those. First of all, we're to list all possible rational zeros. And this will be based on the related polynomial, which is f of x equals x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 4. We know that the zeros of this polynomial, the rational zeros, are all of the form p over q, where p is a factor of the constant term, so this time 4. So p could be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, or plus or minus 4. And q is a factor of the leading coefficient, which this time is 1. So q would have to be plus or minus 1. So our only possible rational zeros are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. It's then suggested that we graph the function so that we can see where its zeros are. And here is the graph of the function. And um, notice that it has zeros at negative 2, negative 1, 2, I'm sorry, 1 and 2. So the actual zeros are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. In the next example, we have the polynomial x cubed minus 6x squared plus 11x minus 6. And we are to find the rational zeros for it. So first of all, we'll find the candidates. And again, our leading term is 1. So all of the rational zeros are going to be integers. We'll have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, or plus or minus 6 as our possibilities. Each of those would be divided by plus or minus 1 because of the leading coefficient. But that leaves us with these integers. So now if we go down to the graph, we see that our actual zeros are one, two, and three, each with multiplicity one, because the curve crosses the x-axis at each of those places. So we are to write the polynomial in factored form. Since its leading coefficient is one, um, we could omit the one or write in the one, but the factors will be x minus 1, x minus 2, and x minus 3. And you can confirm that if you multiply those three binomials together, you get the given polynomial. The last example, another leading coefficient of 1. So all of our rational zeros will be integers. Here our choices are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4, because that's the constant term 
each of those would be divided by plus or minus one because that's the leading term, but that leaves us with these possible integer coefficients. So then when we go down to the graph, we see that there's only two zeros and the actual zeros we have one with multiplicity one at one, and uh, at negative two, we need to have even multiplicity, so it will have to be um, multiplicity two. So to keep that in mind, I'm going to write the negative two twice. So when I write the polynomial in factored form, p of x, taking into account that the leading coefficient was 1, would be 1 times x minus 1 times x minus negative 2, which would be x plus 2, and that factor occurs twice. You could either write it twice or write x plus 2 squared.